Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise of War video I'm going to show you a guide about King of Man, T3 Aragorn. He is one of the best commanders in the game and there is a reason for it, you will see later why. But before we get going, let me give a quick shout out to the following players. The first one being Serhat, he is a respect 10 level King of Man, Aragorn player and he will provide all the reports for this video. That guy has played King of Man for over 10 seasons and we got a lot of information from him. And then also big shout out to Shilki because we reviewed everything we collected so far with him and we came up with the best in case scenario for King of Man. With that being out of the way, let's get right into it. So King of Man, Aragorn. He is a leader type commander which is kind of nice but not what he specializes in. What this commander does best is dealing commander damage by himself while his units tank. And when I say commander damage, let me show you this little visualization. So in front of you, you see now at which rounds with which attack Aragorn deals damage and as you see on each round there is something going and he gets stronger in the late game because he has a title called return of the king it's a skill I don't know if it is a title but I think it was a skill and once you reach round six or was it round five and onwards he deals a certain percentage more damage meaning he gets stronger in the later rounds you just need to survive until then and there is also an item that further boosts the damage of king of man in the later rounds which can stack with the skill return of the king and that is quite something but anyway the reason why i am here is because i wanted to explain to you why i consider the leader typing a waste on aragorn he is dealing damage by himself i think the warrior typing would have been much better but and this is my assumption the game devs probably knew that the warrior typing would have been too strong considering how much damage he's dealing already which is why they gave Gave him kind of the leader typing as a fallback plan to not make him too OP. But yeah, I just wanted to say that if I could choose a typing for King of Man, I would have probably chosen Warrior because of the high commander damage. With the typing explanation out of the way, we move over to the attributes and at a first glance we see that his highest attribute is Might. This is also what you definitely want to push at all times. That is his main stat and then followed by his speed stat. King of Man is very speedy. Like this guy is so fast that he has no problems with outspeeding any important mechanics. That is a good thing. We don't have to worry about speed. And focus is just there. You have no skills that scale with focus. It's just there for the passive damage mitigation and that's it. But long story short, push his might stat as far as possible. In front of you, you are seeing the best in slot items and also the recommended build. And there is something important to know about this build. But before I get into the details, let's just quickly summarize what you should definitely max out. So this king of man being Serhat is at respect level. 10 he is level 50 at this point and he said that you should definitely max out his top respect 0 tree that is one of his core mechanics after that you should aim for his respect 5 title and also the skill return of the king to the top to further increase his damage than the later rounds and then you also want to make sure that you put enough points into dunedain bloodline to get the plus defense for your man units it's all coming down to what gear you have if you have only purple gear then you certainly lack plus defense which is more the reason you have to max out Dunedain Bloodline. If you have one of those items with high defense like Warborn Battleplate, Massive Breastplate, Task of Right, Belt of Zitadel, all of these items have lots of plus defense. In that case, it's enough to spend just one point into Dunedain Bloodline. And then you return to your respect zero title, put two points into Strider, and then you put one point into Strider, and then one point into the skill at the top. And that is the bare minimum that you have to do. And at this point, if you have any more leftover points, you can go back and forth between Rider and the skill Raid. Raid does more damage than Cal the Weak. Now let me further continue explaining why King of Man is so strong. It's all coming down to his respect 5 title. King of Man is decreasing the damage of your man units by minus 90% whenever they are victim to let's say madness or stun. Like King of Man is an anti-CC commander. Whenever CC in is involved, King of Man is most likely going to win the fight. This is King of Man what he does best high commander damage followed by a tanky man unit army whenever cc is kicking in now 
we just need to equip him with the right gear. Let's have a look at the purple best and slot gear. At first glance, one might think that the battle axe with Flay must be his number one weapon, but that is not the case because a Mirkwood bow has not just only decent might stat, but it also has a special effect called Pierce that is allowing you to deal additional physical damage. That has proven to be stronger than Flay. And since the Elven Dagger also has the Pierce effect, that is coming as a second choice. And only then the battle axe is coming in. Like you should prioritize these two weapons to the top. If you don't have them, then go with battle axe. Then as his best in slot purple armor piece, you either go with a superior hauberk and fire protection against Witch King. If you don't have it, go with melee vigor. Or if you are fighting a lot of um, focus damage, let's say Sauron or King of the Dead, or let's say Galadriel, then the quilted armor with focus protection becomes your number one choice. If you don't have it, hold on to it with melee vigor. And as a last honorable mention, you can still make do with a scale mail with melee vigor or gallant. After that, your helmet, you have two choices. The first one being the brutal helmet, which is also boosting the HP of your units. Infantry units such as the guards of tower benefit by plus HP a lot. And then you just roll with melee vigor. And then you also have the full helm, lots of strength, and also melee vigor as a special effect. Both are good. Just pick whatever you have. As his accessory, we don't really have a lot to choose from. Just go with the Hifflane and Bane of Orcs or Mend. Mend would make much more sense if you have a mono stack like a mono stack of guards of the tower now it is time to have a look at this orange gear and this is quite interesting we have a few options over here this respect 10 item can be his best in slot item but you need to at least five star strengthen it and at least two times refine it to make this stronger than the axe of khazad doom with leaf so leaf is your number one choice until you get the Anduril two times refined his armor pieces you have two interesting choices warborn battle plate with fortitude of soldiers or the massive breastplate with significant protection and now jumping over to his helmets there is a very nice special effect within this helmet that just synergizes so well with his skill to the top over here i think it was called return of the king where king of man gets stronger once he reaches round five or six it was and he gets a certain percentage boost to his damage that is huge that special effect can stack with the task of the submerged isle special effect called last resort and with those two special effects stack that means aragorn is going to deal so much more damage once he reaches round 5 and onward. Now keep that in mind, the last resort special effect is the number one choice you would like to have with King of Man. If you don't have it, you can still make do with Formation Break. But what I don't like about Formation Break is that it works only against melee units for the first four rounds and that's it, while last resort is much more universal and synergizes with his skill set to the top. If you don't have this helmet, you can still make do with a Cask of Fright and Fortitude of Soldiers. Lots of might and plus defense for your tanky units that way Aragorn gets enough time to deal damage. As his accessories we have two interesting choices. The first one being the Ant Rod Calabash. It has Gift of Nature as a special effect. This item has lots of might, lots of plus HP. The best in case for this item is for a mono stack if it comes to infantry units. Like your Guards of the Tower, I think benefit by this a lot. Plus 6 HP is a lot for 100 units per command. But if you are running 3 man units in your army, in that case the Belt of the Zitadel is stronger. It has lots of HP, lots of plus defense, and also it has Iron Guard, as well as Arnor defense, which is boosting your man unit's defense. But long story short, the Android Calabash makes more sense with Arts of Tower, a mono stack of them, while the Belt of the Zitadel makes more sense with multiple units in your army. Now let's jump over to the troop composition and let's see what makes sense for T3 Aragorn. In front of you, you already see an example. Just running a mono stack of guards is one of the best case scenarios you can go with but in order to make your guards of the tower stay longer alive you can also add in some decoy units such as sentinels marksmen and hunters like you could also add in let's assume that my sharpshooters are either hunters or marksmen they have a special effect called evade with that you have two decoy units in your army and allow your guards of the tower to stay alive longer in case you are running a multiple army composition to lift the burden of your conscription time that too makes sense Maintaining a mono stack is hard. Let's say you couldn't maintain it. And in case you are playing in Gondor, add in some Sworn Knights and also some Cataphracts. But as I see, I don't have enough Cataphracts left. So let's assume my, my Bow Knights are Cataphracts. And then you just do this. Like you have an equal amount of all of these units in your army. 33% Guards of the Tower, 33% Sworn Knights, 33% Cataphracts. And you are good to go. Or you can even run just two units in your army. Let's say you go like this, 50% 
Shards of Tower, 50% either Swan Knights or Cataphrax. That too can work. And while you're at it, why not throw in one decoy unit like this? You see, it's all coming down to min-maxing the damage you are receiving. And this is King of Man's true composition. And now it is time to check out the battle reports. Our first fight is against the Khaldun. Let's check out the gear of our Aragorn. As you see, it is Axe of Khazadun with Leaf, Wilted Armor with Focus Protection, Full Hand with Man Vigor, and Hif Lane with Mend. And this is the skill build we recommended. Let's see what has happened. We are running a multiple tanky army composition. So Khaldun has these items over here. East Standing Spear with Bane of Mounted Units, Scale May with Melee Vigor, Osman's Helm with Resolve, Rams of Moria with Bane of Wars. And as I see, he is playing the old meta build. He has no Reapers. He is going with Rival Tactics and not focusing on Huntdown. Okay, so that is the old meta build. That is outdated right now. I think he could have done much more damage with Reapers. But let's check out the snapshot page. King of Man has done around 190k damage while having received 220k-ish damage. In the detailed view, we see King of Man is the main source of damage, around 150k damage. Next fight is against the Gorbak player. Our gear has probably stayed the same. Yep, that's pretty much what's going on here. Always the same. Gorbak has these items. Slave of Minas Morgul, Mithril Coat, Serenity, Bone Mask, Hysteria, Warnot Smoking Pipe with Sustain. Remember guys, when I said that King of Man is the king of anti-CC, like whenever Madness or Stun is involved, he is most likely going to win the fight. So this Gorbrak has one CC effect over here and also another CC effect hidden in the Corrupting Curse skill. And whenever that kicks in, the King of Man units are just going to receive less damage. Let's see what has happened in this snapshot page. So King of Man has done 280k damage while having received only 190k-ish damage. And in the detailed view, we see this time Aragorn did almost 220k damage. Here we are fighting a Mouth of Sauron player. Mouth of Sauron specializes in madness. Like every three rounds, he is casting madness. And whenever that is the case, he procs his Respect 5 title, which means Aragorn receives 90% less damage. And this is going to happen. Like, you can't prevent this from happening. He counters everything that has CC so well. Let's check out the gear of Mouth of Sauron. Cutlass with melee might. Scale may with melee vigor. Brutal helmet with melee vigor. And smoking pipe with sustain. He has one point into Master of Mischief. This is being his down fall madness triggers the damage mitigation of king of man let's check out the snapshot page almost 290k damage done by king of man while having received around 80k ish damage king of man has done almost 250k damage and in this fight we are up against a sauron player and guess what cc is involved in this fight which means king of man is most likely going to win by a big difference so let's check out sauron yep he has sent points into ring of terror this is becoming sauron's downfall the respect five title of King of Man is being activated because of this. Let's see what here he has. Arm of a Smite, Scale May with Melee Vigor, Bone Mask with Hysteria, and this too is rocking King of Man's Respect 5 title, followed by the Golden Smoking Pipe with Critical Care. And yeah, let's check out the snapshot page. 330k ish damage done by King of Man, and we have received around 160k damage. In the detailed view, we see again, like, King of Man deals around 250k ish damage. In this fight, we are up against Wind Witch King, and the Witch King is one of King of Man's weaknesses. If you don't have a superior Hawberg with fire protection, you are most likely going to lose the fight. Now, check this out. Witch Kings specialize in the Respect 3 title and also Nazgul Screech. Whenever Nazgul Screech kicks in, you proc the Respect 5 title of King of Man and increase your chances of surviving in round 1. But that is not enough, which is why for round 2 and also any other unit that didn't trigger his Respect 5 title, you you need a Hawberg with fire protection. Once you have that, you are going to win this fight. Let's check out the Witch King's gear. He has a Cutlass with Melee Might, Hawberg with Shroud, Osman's Helm with Warding, and Drums of Moria with Ace of Soldiers. Yeah, it's just a meta built Witch King. Maybe he needed to like remove the Crushers and add in some Mountain Trolls. That way he is protecting his Alchemist much better. Let's check out the snapshot page. We have done almost 190k damage while having received almost 400k damage. Wow, that is huge. Let's check out the Speed Tape view. And yeah, we have done around 140k-ish damage. Let this be our last report we analyze. King of Man has the same gear, nothing has changed, the same build. Sunint is running the Beast build. She has Milkwood Bow with ranged might, Hunter Skin with ranged vigor, Rapper Sword with Hysteria, and Wizards Fireworks with Man. I am kind of intrigued by this build. I do know that it makes sense to have War Beasts, a Great Beast in your army, but why didn't we max out Inspiration? Because that is what Sunint does best, special 
materializing in burst damage. Wouldn't it be worth to remove some points of hand for the leader just to max out inspiration? I think that way, the, this fight would have been in Sunin's favor, but maybe I'm wrong. All right, let's check out the snapshot page. We have done around 340k damage while having received 230k-ish damage. The detailed view, again, almost the same amount of damage. It's always around 250k damage for King of Man. And there you go, guys. Like, this was the guide about King of Man. He is an OP tier commander. Very strong. He gets stronger in the later rounds. If you can give him the right gear, I think you will see why he is at the top of the foot chain. Get the golden items I recommended to you especially the cask of the submerged eye with the special effect last resort and then you should be happy with the rest of your rise to war career you can't go wrong with king of man one of the strongest commanders in the game if you enjoyed this video just like always let me know by leaving a like consider subscribing and above all share the video that will help a lot against youtube and that being said i see you guys next time